Hello students, welcome to another lesson. Today we're going to solve page 15, page 16, and page 17. So let's get started with page 15, exercise 1. Look at the pictures and do the crossword. Number 1, look at this, what is it? It's dessert spoon, very good. Dessert spoon. That's right. What about number two? What is it? It's a napkin. That's right. We use it in restaurants. Number three. What is it? We use it to eat, to put food on it and eat. It's a plate. Plate. And number four. What is this? It's part of the body. We call it elbow. Number five. Look at the baby. Where is he sitting? He's sitting on her lap. He's sitting on her lap. All right. Very good. Now, let's go to the next exercise. What are they saying? Look and write. Exercise 2 says, what are they saying? Number 1. Put lap. Put the napkin on your lap. Look at her hand. There is a napkin in her hand. So, put the napkin on your lap. Number 2. Talk mouth. Don't. Look at him. He's talking with full mouth. So, what do we say? Don't talk with your mouth full number three take off shoes what his mother is saying take off your shoes very good number four put mobile phone put down put your mobile phone on silence put your mobile phone on silent because it's ringing number five put elbows don't put your elbows on the table it's impolite don't put your elbows on the table number six throw rubbish in the street don't throw rubbish in the street on the street don't throw rubbish on the street very good so these are advices or are things that these people should do please write them down in your book now let's go to number number three number three we have to use should or shouldn't number one it's raining it's raining so you should or you shouldn't take an umbrella we should of course number two david hurt his leg so he should or shouldn't play basketball shouldn't of course because he hurt his leg now irma isn't doing well at school she should study harder now we have conversation between a and b i've got a really bad headache you Shouldn't listen to loud music then. Number five, people cut down trees. It's bad for the environment. So should or shouldn't? Shouldn't, of course. Number six, you visit the Statue of Liberty when you go to New York City. It's fantastic. So should. Yes, of course, should. Please write it down in your book. Now, exercise one says, refer to the text about the Sapporo Snow Festival and write T for true and F for false. So, um, how about we make a revision about the text? Let's go to the student book and listen to the text one more time so we can solve the exercise. Here we go. Activity one. What do you think a snow festival is? Listen, read, and find out. The Sapporo Snow Festival What is the Sapporo Snow Festival? It is a famous festival held every year in Sapporo, Japan. It's in February and lasts for seven days. Every year, two million people go to see the snow and ice sculptures. They have fun in the snow. But how did this festival begin? Well, in 1950, six high school boys made six snow statues in Adori Park, Sapporo. Everyone loved the idea, and that's how it started. Snow problems? Some years there isn't enough snow, so lorries bring in snow from outside Sapporo. The sculptures are usually buildings, animals, or even people. In 2004, there was a statue of Hideki Matsui, the famous baseball player. Okay. 
What can visitors see there? Visitors to the festival can enjoy concerts by bands on ice stages, ice slides, and a huge maze made of snow. You can also enjoy a variety of local food. The sculptures are the most important sight. You can get a good view of all the sculptures from the TV tower at Adori Park. At night, they light them up to create a magical winter world. All right. So let's go back to our let's go back to our exercise, which is exercise one. Um, number one, the Sapporo Snow Festival takes a place every seven years. Every seven years? No, of course not. False. Number two, there are sculptures of people, buildings, and animals at the festival. Yeah, true. That's right. Number three, when there isn't enough snow, the festival doesn't take a place. Is that true? No, of course not. It's not true. Visitors can see the sculptures, go to the concerts, and eat at the festival. That's right, they can. True. All right, now let's go to the next exercise. Complete the sentences with the words in the box. We have maze, slide, statue, tower, light up, sculptures. Number one, I think we're lost. There is no way out of this maze. Number two, my little sister was too scared to go down the slide very good number three come on let's climb to the top of the tower there's a of a man on a horse in front of our school statue very good the museum has got a lot of of people and animals sculptures sculptures in my town people their houses on christmas day light up that's right okay now exercise three says listen and number the pictures there is one extra picture you do not need to use here we go workbook module two reading time activity three Listen and number the pictures. There is one extra picture you do not need to use. One. So here we are at the Sapporo Snow Festival. And what a beautiful sight it is. Especially from up here. Yes, from the top of this tower, we can see all the sculptures. Aren't they beautiful? We can also see the slides and the maze. And all the people, of course. And there are a lot of them. Two. Look, here they come. Where? Just over there, near the entrance. How many are there? I can see two, but there may be more coming. We really need the snow this year. You're right. It's not a very good winter for snow sculptures. I hope next year will be better. Wow! This is amazing! Yeah, I've never sung on anything like this before. It's a first for all of us. It's quite high up here, isn't it? Yes. Try not to fall off when you're dancing, okay? So, is everyone ready? Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's do it. One, two, three, four! All right, so, so number one, what do you think? Which picture is number one? They were high. Yes, at the top of the tower. So D is number one. Number two, they were talking about ice and the winter wasn't very good. So that's right, number two. Number three, number three. You heard the music, right? So C, very good. Thank you so much. Write it down in your book. All right. When it comes to the project, we have to write about a traditional dish in our country. So 
It is totally up to you to write about whatever you want. I'm going to write about my favorite dish. And I'm waiting for your opinions and your own ideas, your own favorite dishes. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about biryani. So let's answer the questions. Number one, what dish do you want to, to, to write about? I'm going to write about biryani, which is a slow cooked rice with meat. Number two, where does it come from? It comes from Iraq. Number three, what ingredients do you need? I need rice, oil, onion, chili powder, and salt and meat to make it. Which adjectives best describe this dish? Very tasty. Where can you find this dish? In Iraq, and it's also popular in many Mid-Eastern Islamic countries. Now, exercise 2 says write about a traditional dish of your country. Use the information from activity 1. Here we have to write the title. The title is Biryani, slow cooked rice with meat. This is the Iraqi version of the popular biryani, slow cooked rice with meat. This picture which is also popular in many Mid-Eastern Islamic countries and other places around the world with Muslim population. This very old lunch dinner main course dish is cooked in an exclusive Iraqi style and is a common menu for occasions like Eid or local wedding parties. The use of many essence, spices, and flavors along with scented rice and meat gives it tasty flavor. So I wrote about my favorite traditional dish and I'm waiting for you to write about your own favorite dish. Okay?